Now, this is my third installation of this particular series where I'm just breaking down certain characters of Star Wars and how they relate to the sexual polarity quadrant. Now, so far, I've only touched on the survival mode areas of the sexual polarity quadrant. And this has been an interesting one. One I've been wanting to get into is talking about Qui-Gon Jinn. Now, Qui-Gon Jinn was the master of Obi-Wan Kenobi and he was the student of Count Dooku. Now, one thing that really makes Qui-Gon Jinn stand out to me more than any other character in Star Wars, by my opinion, is that I believe that Qui-Gon Jinn was the most feminine submissive towards the living force, which made him a masculine dominant in real life. And well, in the series, right? So Qui-Gon Jinn was an individual who spent his life, you know, very, you know, uh, moving very well with his peers very good at lightsaber combat con combat uh very good at his job at being a jedi but although he was very good at his job at being a jedi he was someone who often went against the masculine submissive views of the jedi order because the jedi order was heavily predicated upon uh tradition you know traditional values traditional ways of doing things their or the principles of the order qui-gon jen didn't give a fuck about that but although he moved outside of the context of what was considered the rules of the Jedi Order, he still was morally right in how he behaved himself. You know, that's one thing about being a masculine dominant. And one aspect of his masculine dominance that I think is very important to understand is that you have to be feminine and submissive towards something in your life, whether that's your principles, whether that's your values, whether that's your God, your spirituality. And by being feminine and submissive towards that, it puts you in a position where you could be masculine and dominant towards life. You get what I'm saying? So as a man, if you're a leader, if you have your God and you're feminine and submissive towards your beliefs, towards your God, then it gives you the ability to be masculine and dominant towards real life because the greatest pleasure that you receive in life is going to be from your God. So to be masculine and dominant towards life is something you have a capacity to do because the feminine submissiveness is already being fulfilled within you on an internal level. You know, Qui-Gon Jinn was the first one to become a force ghost, right? He was the first one to become a force ghost. Uh, he probably would have been a much greater teacher for Anakin Skywalker, in my opinion, than Obi-Wan Kenobi was because he would have put Obi he would have put Anakin Skywalker on the right track because his awareness of the force, he would have been able to see what was going on within Anakin. He also had the leadership skills to be able to give him guidance and instructions and leadership in times where he needed it. And he would have pointed him in the right direction. You know, uh, I think a big thing I do want to talk about is this, you know, when it came to certain things that he did, you know, there's manipulation involved. There were a lot of rule breaking that was going on. But all these things he did in sight of the greater good and not just the greater good of himself, but the greater good of the galaxy. You get what I'm saying? It's just, you know, going according to the living force. Now, one thing you might notice about the masculine dominant, especially if you've ever seen my video about the Mr. Miyagi method, is that when you look at the deeper lore between Anakin Skywalker, not Anakin Skywalker, but Obi-Wan Kenobi and Qui-Gon Jinn. Qui-Gon Jinn was someone who often frustrated Obi-Wan Kenobi because Obi-Wan Kenobi was an individual who wanted to do things by the book, wanted to perform well, get things done, and then get up out of there, go to the next level. And he had to spend a long time as a Padawan. I think he was a Padawan until he was like 17 years old because with Qui-Gon Jinn, I mean, yeah, because with Qui-Gon Jinn, Qui-Gon Jinn was trying to teach him some deeper things. He wanted to have him to have a deeper understanding of what it meant to be a leader, a deeper understanding of what it meant to give yourself to the living force. And when you're masculine and submissive, your mindset is often going through the, the motions of what you have to do on a regular basis to get done what you need, need to get done. And when that's not something that gives you enough stimulation on that emotional level, that that feminine level, then oftentimes uh that lack of excitement that lack of enjoyment that you would get out of it something i'd be frustrating so qui-gon jim would have you know obi-wan kenobi doing a lot of reading having him you know uh decipher and uh 
and translate texts, ancient texts, because he's trying to work through prophecies. One thing about a masculine dominant is you often have a certain Zen or a certain sage like as uh, not a sage like but a guru like aspect to yourself, because when you yield yourself to God or your principles and beliefs on a level to where you want to be in touch with and in contact with the spirituality from a pure place. It often gives you a certain level of patience, right? It's a certain level of patience you may have at times to where you have emotional discipline. Like Qui-Gon Jinn was oftentimes the epitome of emotional discipline. If we're looking at his relationship with Tal, there was one time in Qui-Gon Jinn's life where he was leaning towards tapping into the dark side. And as he tapped into that rage and that anger, which is necessary sometimes, before he made that final blow, Ta spoke to him and he stopped. He was able to stop himself without giving himself completely over to the dark side. And by having that experience, it's something that would have helped him be able to be there for Anakin because he's actually experienced it. You know what I mean? And and he was actually able to fight and come back so that he would have good knowledge to give on it. You know, Qui-Gon Jinn had times where he could have been part of the Jedi Council and he turned it down because he didn't agree with the Jedi Council. Right. He wasn't someone who blindly followed authority because he was connected to the source of where the authority came from. He was connected to the power source, the infinite source, the, the, the living force. And because he was connected to that, his morals at times from the perspective of the Jedi Order would be shaky. But at the same time, they knew that his character was impeccable. So there are times where they would want him in a position of leadership and being a Jedi master is a position of leadership. But at the same time, they knew that they couldn't control Qui-Gon that oftentimes he would have a vision or a belief that would seem so out the blue, so grandiose, you know, his heavy belief in the chosen one. And with these beliefs, oftentimes someone who is on the more of the masculine submissive side or who's impatient, who's on the masculine, I mean, the feminine dominant side, they may not truly be able to see where he's coming from. You know what I mean? Because he would look deeper into things and be more so focused on his purpose his vision, his understanding, where he was trying to go. And, and a lot of it was just about bringing the, the galaxy, bringing the force back to balance. That was his goal. That was his objective. And anything he had to do to do that, he'd be willing to do it. But there was a certain level of selflessness. And that selflessness is what gave him the, the ability to become a force ghost. Now, Qui-Gon Jinn was a good fighter, but he wasn't, you know, he, he was beaten by Darth Maul. Darth Maul would represent a feminine dominant. You know, most Sith Lords would represent feminine dominance. And in that feminine dominant space, oftentimes they will be able to beat a masculine dominant at times. Right. You know, fighting ability is just fighting ability. But when we're looking at the character of who Qui-Gon Jinn was as a man and as a Jedi and as a master, it was very good. Now, one thing that we can say about his teaching methods, and I talk, touched on this a little bit. But within Qui-Gon Jinn's teaching methods, he was very heavily focused on the internal things that needed to be learned, right? So if you're a masculine submissive with a masculine dominant, and that's your relationship dynamic, it's oftentimes difficult because there are going to be certain things that are intangible and nuanced that you need to learn that if those things are just not on the surface to where you can easily pick it up and catch it and move on, then you're going to get frustrated and feel like you're wasting your time and feel like you're being held back because they want you to learn something that they're trying to teach you. But you also need to learn for yourself. And, and that's part of what a masculine dominant does. A masculine dominant doesn't always quickly uh, raise people to a position of authority or to a position of power because they understand the weight of authority. They understand the weight of power. They understand the weight of the position that you're trying to be in. So he let Obi-Wan stay at a Padawan for a long period of time. But where the, the time came where he wasn't able to take that mantle of a leader, you know, he, he shifted that to Obi-Wan because he knew Obi-Wan had good character. You know, Obi-Wan wasn't as prepared or in the best position to actually train Anakin and, and raise him up the way he needed because he needed a father. You know, he needed a father. He didn't have a father in his life. The close thing to a father he had was Palpatine. And based off of some of the sources, you know, some people say it was either Palpatine or Plagueis who uh, who manipulated the midichlorians to create Anakin Skywalker. So technically speaking, some could say Palpatine. Some would say that Palpatine is Anakin's father. You know what I mean? 
but Qui-Gon Jinn was a man who could have really raised him you know uh, that's one aspect about it is the fatherly aspect right uh, Qui-Gon Jinn was a, a very fatherly individual when it came to how he led you know good leadership skills and uh he would do things that would go outside the box because he wasn't leaning to the laws. He was leaning to the inner understanding of all things being good to him, but not everything being expedient, you know, not everything being helpful. So there are different things that he would do that would go against the quote unquote rules. But those rules that he went against, it still went towards the overall narrative of what his purpose was, his objective was. And I just wanted to talk about that real quick. I think Qui-Gon Jinn is a shining example of what a masculine dominant is from the perspective of being masculine dominant through being feminine and submissive towards the living force or through God or through whatever your beliefs are, whatever your purpose and your vision is. If you yield yourself to that over anything else, right, then especially if that's a positive thing, especially if that's something that's uplifting and not purely a selfish ambition type of thing, then you put yourself in a scenario to where you have the ability to take things further than a lot of people can. When you yield yourself to that power, when you yield yourself to that purpose. And that was what Qui-Gon Jinn's life was all about. He would take time. He went to the source of the force, you know, and, you know, learned about midichlorians learned the prophecies, took his time to really want to figure things out because, you know, he came about at the right time and place and he knew that his life had purpose on it. And because he knew he came at the right time and place and his life had purpose on it, there are certain rules that he was willing to break. And there are certain ways that he knew that these things might go bad, that they might backfire. And although he knew these things might go bad and that they may backfire, he still knew the necessity of them, right? Like on, a, I believe, was it Dagobah or wherever it was where I believe Anakin Skywalker, it might not have been Dagobah, but Anakin Skywalker was on a planet with the force beings, right? You know, father and brother and sister. And I believe Qui-Gon Jinn showed up to him there as a, as a force ghost and told him, listen, you're going to go through your trials and your tribulations, but at the end of it, you're still going to do what's necessary to bring about the balancing of the force. And that's something that's very important to understand. You know, there is certain foresight that Qui-Gon Jinn had. Uh, when things got difficult for him, he would go into meditation, but he would go into his meditation in a way to actually get answers. You know, uh, there was a quote, and I think I used it in another video, which is that when the righteous lose the light, evil, once thought to be gone, will return. And that's not the exact quote, but that's what it meant. Qui-Gon was someone who never lost the light. When the Jedi Order lost Qui-Gon, that's when they lost the remnant of the light that they had. They were still quote unquote good, but being good for good sake, uh, not just good for good sake, but being good through being traditional and being principled in the way that they were, it caused them to be used for the purpose of a lot of wars, a lot of basically just being a police force for the Senate and they were treated more like warriors than like priests they were treated like soldiers and honestly Qui-Gon Jinn was the main individual who had that perspective who had the light who had the vision who understood what was going on and who sought out to do what was necessary right he sought out the light. He sought out knowing what direction the force wanted to go in. And he yielded himself to that. He didn't fight against it. He didn't try to seize it for power for himself. He he yielded himself to it so that he could live a life that he believed was pleasing to the force. So I think what else I want to talk about? Uh, Count Dooku. Count Dooku was an individual that was his master. And he would also probably be, be considered a, a masculine dominant to a certain extent. But he's also had some, some feminine dominance in him because he didn't necessarily yield himself to the living force. He yielded himself to his, his selfish ambitions. You know what I mean? And it wasn't necessarily about, and, and it was about saving some people, but it, it wasn't about bringing balance to the force. It was about just correcting the politics. And when you mess with politics too much, you get corrupted yourself. And that's what happened to, to Count Dooku. 
And that was the master of Qui-Gon Jinn. Count Dooku had a certain level of darkness to him where he always told Qui-Gon Jinn that he was going to be alone. So he always raised Anakin Skywalker as his Padawan to not believe that he was going to be alone and to be someone who shared love, who spread love, and who was a conduit of the living force. So this is Coach Brody on Qui-Gon Jinn, the masculine dominant. May the fourth be with you.